Hello everyone, welcome to Manocha Academy. In this video, we are going to perform a practical on urine tests. We are going to find out how we can detect the presence of different kinds of substances like urea, bile salt, protein and glucose in a sample of simulated urine. So I will be walking you through all the steps of the procedure to be followed and the observations that we have which will confirm the presence or absence of these substances in urine. So let's get started with the procedure. The first test that we are going to perform is to detect the presence of protein in urine. So for that we have taken test tubes, we have taken spirit lamp, we will need a test tube holder, a dropper, the urine sample and sulfosalicylic acid. So the urine sample if it contains protein we will see what will happen when we perform this experiment. We will take about 2 ml of this urine sample in the test tube. To this we will add sulfosalicylic acid. I will take about a few drops of sulfosalicylic acid. As you can see immediately a white turbidity appears. Why does this white turbidity appear? Because sulfosalicylic acid makes the protein present in urine if protein is present in urine then sulfosalicylic acid being an acid coagulates the protein and makes it precipitate which gives that turbidity. Now what happens if you heat it? So for this I will just use my spirit lamp and with the help of a test tube holder I will take the test tube and I will slowly heat it. Let's see what happens when you heat it. As we can see as you heat it the turbidity increases. An increase in temperature makes the protein precipitate faster in the presence of sulfosalicylic acid. A similar kind of reaction occurs when you add citric acid to milk. The protein clots and coagulates and precipitates. So as you can see here now this shows a much uh, you know a turbid a curdy white precipitate that is forming and this confirms the presence of protein. So I repeat we have taken the urine sample. The urine sample if it contains protein we will take about 2 ml of that and if it contains protein when we add a bit of sulfosalicylic acid to it it turns turbid and when we heat it it turns into a curdy white precipitate. Okay? So this is a confirmatory test for protein. The next experiment that we are going to perform is also to test the presence of protein in urine sample. So for this, this test is known as Heller's test. For this, we will be requiring concentrated nitric acid. Be careful with this reagent. Urine sample, test tube, test tube holder, dropper and a spirit lamp. Now this experiment works on the same principle that an acid would denature the protein and precipitate it. So what we are going to do here, we are going to take about 2 to 5 ml of concentrated nitric acid in a test tube. We have to be very careful with this because this is concentrated and this can cause serious injury if not handled properly. I have taken the nitric acid in the test tube, this is concentrated. Now I am going to pour the urine sample inside this test tube but I am not going to pour it in a way that it mixes with the nitric acid. So I am going to just hold the test tube like this, I will just slant it, I will take the sample, urine sample and I am going to trickle the sample along the edge. And you can see a white ring has formed at the junction between the concentrated nitric acid and the urine sample. 
Why? Because at that junction the protein has come in contact with the concentrated nitric acid and has been denatured. As a result of which it has formed a curdy or milky white structure uh, precipitate which is forming that ring. So this gives a positive Heller's test. This also confirms that protein is present in the urine sample. The next experiment that we are going to perform is to test the presence of glucose in urine. You know that glucose is uh, present in urine of a person who is suffering from diabetes mellitus that is high blood sugar. So we will be performing two tests to detect the presence of glucose in urine uh, in the simulated urine sample. So we will be performing the Benedict's test and Felling's test. So first let's perform the Benedict's test. For this we will be needing Benedict's reagent, spirit lamp, simulated urine sample, test tubes, test tube holder and a dropper. So what I will be doing is I will first light my spirit lamp here. Now I will be taking some simulated urine sample in my test tube. And I will be adding few drops of Benedict's reagent to my sample. About 4 to 5 drops of Benedict's reagent. As you can see it is now blue in color. It has taken the color of the reagent. Now I will be heating it. Now I will be taking this and I will be heating it and we will look at the color change that is happening if any. So as you can see already a slight change in color has started taking place. And what color is this? This is clearly yellow, yellow color. So I am just shaking this so that the color is uniform all over. The reaction takes place uniformly. Let's see if there is any further change that occurs. Now, we can see that the color becomes clearer and now it is slightly changing from yellow to orange. Right? So see, you can see this orange color all over. Now let's heat it a little further and see if there is any other change that is about to happen. So as you can see the orange color slowly becomes even more darker. Okay, so no further change is happening here. So what has happened here? The color was initially blue because of the Benedict's color, reagent's color. And then it turned to yellow and then it turned to orange. So this is a confirmatory test for glucose. If glucose is present in urine, we get these color changes. If the level, if the amount of glucose is less, it is yellowish in color. If the amount of glucose is moderate, it is orange in color, right? So depending on how much color, what color you get, depending on that, you can comment on the amount of glucose that is present in the simulated urine sample. Now, why, why does this reaction occur? Benedict's reagent is a mixture of sodium carbonate, sodium citrate and copper sulfate pentahydrate. When there is reducing sugar that is glucose present in the urine sample, cupric that is Cu2 plus ions in the Benedict's reagent gets converted into cupric Cu plus ions in the sample. As a result of which the color changes from blue to yellow to orange and if there is too much of glucose present then this color would change to brick red. Okay, So this is one of the most important and easy confirmatory tests for the presence of glucose in urine sample. The next test we are going to perform is again to detect the presence of glucose in urine and for that we will be using Felling's test. So this is Felling 1 also known as Felling solution A and this is Felling 2 also known as Felling solution B. And we will be needing our spirit lamp, our test tube holder, dropper and test tubes. So what I will do is I will take 2 ml of the urine sample. You can measure it in a measuring cylinder and measure 2 ml. I am just taking it as per my estimate. 
and now I will be taking equal amounts that is 2 ml of felling A and 2 ml of felling B. As you can see a dark blue color has already appeared. Now we will be heating it and we are expecting to see the same kind of color change that we saw in case of Benedict's reagent. That is we are expecting that we will see a green precipitate first. A green color or a green precipitate indicates the presence of traces of glucose which should turn to yellow if there is more glucose in urine and to a brick red color if there is excessive amount of glucose in urine. So I will just light my spirit lamp. And now I will heat it gently. The color change will be really fast if there is excessive amount of glucose. So you have to keep a very close eye. The change has already started happening. As you can see a brick red color has appeared already. And this reaction occurs because of the aldehyde group which is present in glucose. A brick red color is formed. This is a test that confirms the presence of glucose in the urine sample. The next test we are going to perform is to test the presence of urea in urine. Now urea is normally supposed to be present in urine but if there is excess amount of urea it is indication of the fact that too much of protein breakdown is taking place inside the body. It's called uremia uh, that, that there is an excess amount of urea in the blood as well possibly. So uh, what do we do for this? We will be requiring sodium hypobromite. Now urea as you know is a com compound which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. So it is CH4N2O and when we will be adding sodium hypobromide to the urine sample we will be able to see brisk effervescence of nitrogen uh, from the sample. So the sodium hypobromide will be breaking down urea into nitrogen and nitrogen gas will be given out as a very as a brisk effervescence. So we'll be needing our urine sample, we'll be needing sodium hypobromide and I will be needing a test tube with a test tube holder. Um, it's always good to hold your test tube with a test tube holder so that you do not have this possibility of uh, pouring anything in your hand. So see I have taken some urine sample and now I will be adding sodium hypobromide with the help of a dropper to this urine sample and we will look closely and we will observe if we can see nitrogen gas evolving from here. We can see there is effervescence of uh, taking place. You have to look very closely to see this. There are bubbles that are coming out if you can see. This is nitrogen gas evolving from the solution from the urine sample that is. You can see as you can as you will stir and shake it mix the urine sample with sodium hyperbromide more nitrogen gas will evolve okay so this is a confirmatory test that nit uh, urea is present in the sample of urine the next experiment that we are going to perform is to test the presence of uh, bile salt in urine as you know bile salt uh, that is sodium torocolate and sodium glycocolate they become excessive in urine in case a person is suffering from jaundice right so it's indicative of the fact that there's some kind of jaundice um, it could be obstructive jaundice or some kind of jaundice taking place in a person the urine becomes very dark yellow in color or almost orange in color 
and there are yellowish tints shown in different other parts of the body. So, to perform this experiment, we will be using a Smith's test. So, we have our Smith's reagent here and we have the urine sample. So, these are all that we are going to need. So, for this, we will first take about 1 ml of Smith's reagent in the test tube. All right. So, I have taken about 1 ml of Smith's reagent in the test tube. And now, I will slowly add the urine sample into the test tube. However, I am not trying to mix the urine sample with the Smith's reagent. So, I will be tilting the test tube and I will be just trickling the urine sample along the edge of the test tube. Alright, so we do not see an observation looks like the experiment failed possibly because of the Smith's reagent, but this is how it should have actually looked. And this confirms the presence of bile salt in the sample of urine. So, those were the experiments confirming the presence of protein, urea, bile salt and sugar in urine. Now, here is a question for you. Can you tell me what is the condition called when there is excess amount of protein or albumin present in urine? Please write your answers in the comments below as I eagerly wait to read your answers and I promise to reply to all of them. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned from it. Do check out the courses on our website manochaacademy.com and our Android app Manocha Academy. Links are given below. We have courses on physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, coding and artificial intelligence. In these courses you will get live classes, concept videos, quizzes, mock tests and revision notes. So they will be perfect for your exam preparation. Do hit the like button and share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of our videos. Stay connected with Manocha Academy and let's keep learning together. So what I'll do is I'll take about 2 ml of my urine sample. Huh? down the edge as you can see a green <laughs> as you can see a bullet look through that